probably be, be executive produced by a guy named, I think he's going to kill me for this, Brian Wood, who I went to uh, kindergarten all the way through college with. Um, uh, he's really, he's the biggest uh, producer in horror. Um, he's done all the remakes. He did the Friday the 13th. <laughs> It's funny because I'm in touch with Brian again, but uh, if it got made, that would be the, so you can find him on Facebook. And you can pick him in the ball. Apparently, you can do that now. And, and, say, and say, Brian, if you think what a betrayal that would be to the person you've known your entire life. Um, so, why don't you just stop some remakes in general? Well, they make money. You know, that's, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is that's everything in Hollywood. You know, that's, and that's why, that's why it's so good that this, um, this indie. To, to what's going on in Hollywood, which is so embarrassing. I mean, you know, the, the Omen and, uh, you know, I mean, the, the last draw for me would be if they made The Exorcist, I would kill myself. I would just say Because yeah. it's my favorite movie. Yeah. The only cool thing I always say about uh, remaking these classics, these 80s movies, is, you know, it sheds some light on the original so that a whole new generation of kids, they go to see the new one and then they find out, wait, there's an original, and they, you know, go back and check it out. Thing. Yeah, they figure that out too, yeah. But uh, that's the best part about the remake, so who knows? We've talked about it. We have talked about it. We make it. Um, I always say for a minute, I'd like to play a Martha. So, yeah. <laughs> Angela! <laughs> that, would be that, would be, that would be really weird. That's my mom. Yeah. Now we're getting back. The whole thing is getting very, very, very weird. <laughs> I get it and I play a mama. That's my mom. Can you still rock those shorts? <laughs> <laughs> that half tank? Come on now. I got great legs. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take his clothes off. Yes. He has nice clothes. He puts his shots my neighbor.
husband because of it, and kids, and a career, and I mean, I just love that little movie. I love Robert, and I'm so grateful that he cast me in that role, and um, I, I'm endeared to it, you know? It sounds funny, because it's like, well, if you were in it, it's, I don't mean to be obnoxious about it, it's just, I really, it's like a family member, you know? It's, it's cool to have that history. And I thank you guys so much for like embracing it too, and that means so much to us, like that you welcome us here, and thank you. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Like years ago, the movie kind of fell into you know obscurity, and how did it feel when the website came along, the Sleepaway Camp website, and everybody came out of the woodwork? How did that feel to realize that there was this big of an audience kind well, of hiding and hiding for the movie? Yeah, and we'd be remiss without saying um, thanks to Jeff Hayes. Jeff Hayes runs sleepboycampmovies.com, and really in 2000 he came out and he made the website, um, and all of a sudden there was this like resurgence. It just went crazy, you know. All these websites and his really exploded, and people emailing us and you know finding it. it's like everybody was in the closet. I like Sleepboy Camp, but I don't want to say it, <laughs> you know. And then they came out and we went, holy shit. We went to the Fangoria Convention in 01, and our, I don't know how, we had like tons of people. It was insane. It was, it was I mean, because Bruce Campbell was there, and our, our table was way busier than his. And that's, that was our first day. And that's fucked up. What if And uh, I mean, the line was just insane. And I mean, people just gave me staggers before I. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and, uh, but it's, 
you know, but she and I have this sort of rapport where, I mean, there were people laughing out loud in the theater because she becomes so used to it and deranged that she really knows how to get my goat. And so she just keeps, she keeps like making fun of me while I'm trying to torture these guys and I get really mad and I start arguing with her about whether what I'm saying is correct or not. She's giving me a hard time. The best scene though ever is when she's eating. <laughs> she's eating the food of the plate, the plate and she's talking to the other actors in the cage who's about to die and she's got a mouthful of food. She's like, and he's, he's forced to watch these videos of all, all the people that I've killed so he can decide how he wants to go. And uh, so, <laughs> She's like, you know, if I were you, she's got all the food falling out of her mouth, she's got no utensils or anything. She's like, I go with the head and the vice. She's like, it looks way worse on the film, but once that you hear that pop, it's over. The film is deranged. It's really like, you know. My husband is totally like unfazed by any horror movie. He's seen every single movie that's ever been made in the horror genre. And he was biting his nails. He's like, ooh, this is a rough one. He said it was the best movie that Plus has been in, too. Well, aside from Sleepaway. Aside from Sleepaway. Yeah, he, he thought it was great. But I really, I do, I, you know, I can't recommend The Perfect Taste, but the reviews have been great. The Perfect um, Taste. It's really, it, you know, it's been growing, uh, you know, it's really organic because it's an indie film, but uh, the cinematographer uh, was unreal. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's so How cool. Is our yeah, because you got the first one where it's sort of grainy, almost black and white, and the colors change, and the score follows that, too. Um, and I have two songs in it. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so you said it's coming out on, it's being launched on Facebook. Yeah. So is it uh, also going to be coming out on DVD, or? I think the end of October comes out on DVD. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Facebook's flick launch. And they're on a tour right now. They took the movie, the director and producers, and they're actually riding in a van across the country. Talk about like ambitious. To they in each city they stop and show it at a theater that will show it, and they're trying to get fans. And you know that's yeah, it's, cool. it's, it's like the Animal House car. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, and it's cool because the system, it's hard nowadays. Talk about the '80s. It was a lot easier to get you know movies in the theaters. Now it's very. You know, especially when you compete with the DVD. Yeah, and, and movies don't make a lot of years, you know. And I mean, even blockbusters, you know, uh, they end up recouping a lot Are of losses. Are they still business? You know? I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's, the, uh, you know, uh, when we did Sleepaway Camp, this is what, you know, people talk about, you know, how the film sort of fell into obscurity and all that stuff. But when it came out, it was a big deal. Um, you know, it was on, you know, network television, there were commercials. Um, it ran in theaters for 17 weeks. You know, that just doesn't happen so anymore, time. you know. What did it beat in the first weekend? Yentl. <laughs> the other girl <laughs> and, 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 and the And the Amityville sequel, it beat that oh, too. Oh, right, yeah. It was, you know, it was so, interesting. Yeah. Well, now I think Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> You were only 13. I was 13. Did your mom I take your read this first before you accepted it? She got to the end and watched it. She, what she I don't know what she was smoking. <laughs> but it must have been really good because she read the script with me. We had to go into the agent's office and read the script. She's like, oh, this is great. This is perfect. But, you know, I didn't know any better. Okay, she was such a stage mother. She's like, she got a roll. It doesn't matter what the role is. You got a roll. You know, because originally Robert wanted me to wear um, a penis. Yeah, I'm sure everybody, does everybody know what happened at the end there? Yeah. Has everybody seen it? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I mean, but, I mean, well, you can explain it. Um, well, originally uh, he had wanted to have, and I don't know how he was going to do it, I guess he would have bandaged me and had Ed French, the special effects person, make something to, you know, for me to wear over my teeny little boobies, I uh, no boobies, they had bandaged me, but there was nothing to bandage, and, and now I have big boobies, so I'm all happy <laughs> and so they wanted me to wear a penis, and um, I don't know, just didn't, no one thought, that wasn't a good idea, so they made a mask of my face, and they had to find a guy who was of age to do nudity, because it was full frontal. He had to be willing to shave, because I had no hair. He had to have a thin face, I was 13, a little girl. So they found a kid on a college campus, and I think he drank himself to death that night. He just, he was hysterically crying, standing there, you know. And the poor little penis, I think it was 
things like that. They were just like, oh, God, it was freezing cold. And oh, no, I don't want to get, oh, he was swimming, and it's like a turtle, and yeah, whatever. The guy had a small dick. <laughs> he was not in the credits. <laughs> I just told my mom, like all oh, little kids, I want to be an actor, and she took it really seriously and got like a local manager. My mom, yeah, she was young, I and mean, she's 20 years older than me, so she was like 33. Was she um, no, she wasn't into, you know, she likes all movies, it wasn't like, oh, you have to be in a horror movie, but that was, oh, they, I, I was considered like ethnic, you know, they love blondes in, in movies and commercials, so they said, if you get this role, we'll sign you. So I thought, okay, I have to get this role. And when I meet, met Robert, the director, he and I immediately like connected. He was like, okay, just stay here and pretend you're eating a candy bar. And so I'm like picking my teeth. I'm like, so he must have thought I was a strange little kid. <laughs> what was your audition? Well, he asked me to tell mom. Makes that was easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I got into the acting thing. Uh, in a more convoluted way, I guess it was. I was, you know, at my high school. I was, I was a wrestler. I played tennis. I played soccer. Um, I had never done a, a school production. I was a hand. No kidding. But uh, and uh, the rumors started flying around my high school that they were doing a commercial. So basically, the whole high school auditioned for this commercial. I didn't even sign up. And two of my friends dragged me into the principal's office to sign up like five minutes before this thing, so I signed up. There's 1,700 kids in the cafeteria. It took a week of auditions. Finally, on like the last day, we found out it was a Pepsi commercial. And then uh, and then we found out it was from Gabriel Kaplan from Welcome Back Copper. And, uh, and I was like, I adored him. I mean, I Did just, you get it? I got it. And, uh, so I met Gabe Kaplan. I got to work with him for three days. And he um, told my mom that I was natural. And that was the first time I asked my mom. I said, I would like to get it. And, uh, I, you know, I've never seen Gabe since, which is sad, because I would love to, but um, he's, he's made a lot of money as a professional, as a professional poker player. That's what, uh, that's what he does. He's not He's been doing, I think he's been doing some stand-up again recently, but he's really, he's made millions and millions as a professional poker player. He's a brilliant, brilliant poker player, and I, and there's, I mean, he's an amazing guy too. Like the guy who played uh, Juan Epstein was homeless, and Gabe Kaplan took him in. Um, so he's he's just a super sweet, awesome guy.